Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. To Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody, I'm Dave Vellante and with my co-host, Paul Gillen. For the last two days, we've been covering the MIT IQ, hashtag MIT IQ. Check out the crowd chat at, uh, at crowdchat.net slash MIT IQ. Hey Paul, this is our third year here. Thanks to you, we're, we're here. And we've seen the sort of evolution of this discussion. The, the chief data officer um, has gone from sort of single digits and very narrow set of industries. is slowly emerging as a, a role within organizations of more prominence, but still one that's fuzzy to a lot of, uh, of observers like ourselves. You know, very clearly, there's a need for a chief data officer as an evangelist. Uh, it's emerging in those regulated industries, financial services, healthcare, and government. They're sort of leading the charge. But it's still, the role is still stuck in the, the mire of governance and the edicts of risk uh, with the hope of trying to deliver value to the organizations. And it's very clear that people are struggling with that value proposition, how to quantify it, how to articulate it, how to organize for it, where it should sit in the organization. It's, it's very clear that there is a need for elevated awareness of data in, in all organizations and the value of data and the importance of good governance and, and data quality. Whether there's a need for a CDO role I think is still, uh, is still a, an open question. And I, I hosted a panel today uh, on the question, of op almost open-ended topic of the future of the CDO role. And it was a very dynamic discussion with, I mean, the whole room was very involved in this and there was really no agreement. And I think that the, it, it sort of came down to the CDO role could turn out to be uh, symbolic in the same way that people used to talk about the, C, the chief customer officer uh, or the chief people officer, if you remember those trends that were popular for, for a few years, and then kind of fizzled out. But they still had a value because they raised awareness that yes, customers are important and our, and our human resources are important, so they served a function. The chief data officer could end up being that. It could be a, a, a title that does not have a lot of staying power, but sure, serves the short-term purpose of alerting companies, of getting companies really organized around data, really data-driven. On the other hand, something I pointed out to, to the uh, crowd today uh, in my session, I said, you, when I grew up, data and information were synonymous. So we have this chief data officer and a chief information officer. Isn't that the same thing? And if we need a chief data officer, is that actually a, a, an indication that the chief information officer has failed in that role? To which the head of the MIT Chief Information Officer Symposium vigorously objected. But the, the point was, we are gonna, we're, we're in a transition stage right now. Infrastructure is going away. Uh, not going, not quickly, it's not going to happen overnight, but over the next 10 years we're going to see a lot less infrastructure in corporations and a lot more in the cloud. And so what is the role of the CIO in that function? And does the CDO, do, does really the, the, the asset that's left behind, is that data? And does the CIO become the chief data officer? I would argue that many of them are not, don't have the skill set to do that. Does the chief data officer supplant the CIO? Uh, or do they sort of merge into one, in, into one role by that name or something else? What's your take on well, that? Well, I'm, I'm in listening to you, I'm reminded of the most interesting interview I think we did in theCUBE last year, 2014, was at the HP user, uh, Big Data User Conference with a gentleman named Alan Nance of Phillips. And he said, that his CEO came you know, to the conclusion one day after doing all this analysis and, and announced to the team, 80% of our IT effort and spend is undifferentiated, and that has to change. Now I thought about that and said, hmm, that's probably not far off from most organizations. That, you know, the vast majority of what they do, what they spend on keeping the lights on is non-differentiable. And the CIO is the steward of that undifferentiated spend. So something's got to give. So what has to happen? So I think the organization has to transform its infrastructure so that it's getting rid of that non-differentiated heavy lifting. It has to reskill so that it can become maybe a broker of those sets of services and focus its attention on innovation. What does that mean? Well, that means finding 
ways to add value that are differentiated, whether that's through software development or through new partnerships or through ex exploiting this, what we sometimes refer to as the digital fabric, you know, Dave Michelle has sort of coined that term, exploiting that in ways that can develop new business models. Now, in thinking about that digital fabric, sure, there's cloud, that's great. You can become a cloud broker. I think CIOs are in a position to sort of manage that transition. Uh, but if they're not doing all that heavy lifting, the requirement is going to become much more, you know, rote, uh, much less, you know, like the head of like the head of engineering or security or yeah. physical security services. Yeah, that's right. Where you're overseeing a uh, an asset, you're protecting an asset, but you're really not delivering any value to it, the organization. It, it, that's and who right. wants to be there? And so, and then if you've got a big application development, you know, team, you're talking about your big task ahead. You got to take your systems of record and your systems of engagement, and you have to build out systems of intelligence, what IBM calls systems of insight, and you've got to make those systems work together. You've got to extend them into real, the real time you know, nature of, of data analytics. So that's a big job. Uh, and then you've got this data layer that you're going to leverage. And so it, it seems to me that the success of the CIO is going to depend on how well they can leverage that data layer and what, what role they play in organizing their, their catalyzing and organizing their company to exploit that, that data layer. And, you know, it's very unclear to me how that evolves. As I say, in, in the regulated industries, the, the starting point was governance. In the, you know, not less regulated industries, it's the line of business that's going to be driving that, and they are not want to be subservient to some kind of corporate chief data officer role. It's, I don't see that happening. I think it's one, one thing is clear is that the, uh, the data belongs in the, on the business, in the business side. The chief data officer is, represents the interests of the business. Um, where does that leave the CIO? If that person is, is representing the needs of the, uh, the need to, pr to protect assets, to keep the lights on, then that is not something that the, that the business side is going to relate to very much anymore. Um, you know, I attend CIO conferences. You and I both attend a lot of CIO conferences. How, how, how confident are you that most of the CIOs you've met are ready to make that leap to really being business innovators? I don't, I don't see it. Well, I'll tell you where I do see it, is there are pockets of, 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 of innovative CIOs that you see that are really driving hard toward new business models with cloud and mobile and, and social. And a good example is at the ServiceNow conference, you meet a lot of CIOs that are just really driving transformation hard. They're jettisoning, jettisoning their old system thinking. Not necessarily their old systems, but their old system thinking. And they're moving virtually everything they possibly can in their application portfolio to the cloud where it makes sense, except those things that give them significant differentiation that they're managing you know, very, very carefully. And I would say that in less than 10% of the cases, that CIO is a business savvy leader. I'm not saying they're not professional or you know, smart, but Confident, they're, not, certainly they're, they're not capable or qualified to step in and run a business P&L. Um, an increasing number is, maybe it's 15%, but the vast majority are sort of overseers of you know, the technology infrastructure. And so I do see that role changing. Now you ask me how confident am I that that role will sort of you know, be around, essentially, is what you're asking. Well, these, those people uh, will step up to that role. Yeah, so I think, that, um, I, I think that the dynamics of that change are going to force, a, you know, create a vacuum and, and and people with the right skills will fill that vacuum. But I do see a lot of disruption coming there. The disruption that we're seeing in the business is not just the vendor community, right? It's the, it's the, it's the practitioners that are going to see the biggest disruption in their business. And again, everybody uses the examples of Uber and Airbnb. Every industry is going to see that, that sort of disruption and, and transformation. Now, I think the good news for industry is they're sitting on a lot of cash, Right, they got a lot of resources, productivity is up, technology is helping them do more with less. Very clearly, uh, uh, machines are replacing humans, you know, and, and cognitive tasks are being replaced. So productivity is going through the roof. So I do think that ultimately the rich get richer in this scenario. Um, and I think the large cap companies will figure it out uh, because they have the resources to. 
And I think they have the buying power to acquire uh, companies that can help them get there. So I am, I am fairly sanguine about the, you know, the large cap U.S. economy. I actually think it's got a good future ahead of it. And I would say the same thing is true for the technology vendors, but not necessarily from a growth perspective. You know, as I always say, HP has to shrink to grow. IBM is shrinking. Um, you know, companies like Oracle that are growing in the single digits are super happy because they're gaining share. You know, Microsoft's quite interesting, actually. Um, but I think those companies have the resources, the wherewithal, and the buying power and the leverages to sustain. Um, so I think that it's kind of interesting, the practitioner side and the vendor, the big vendor side, I think they're, they're a mirror image. And I think these small, small innovators, I think most of them get gobbled up or they die. Well, my favorite Samuel Johnson quote is, there is nothing like a noose to concentrate the mind. <laughs> and certainly that's, that's, happening to, uh, that's happening to the IBMs and HPs of the world. I, I would say coming out of this conference, maybe some CIOs should be looking at it that way as well. Cloud, uh, it, cloud is a great thing, it's a great development, and, and most CIOs are totally on board with the value of cloud. But cloud could ultimately make a lot of what they do irrelevant. And that means that they need to be thinking now, uh, looking, uh, looking around those corners now to figure out how are they going to remain relevant to the organization. The smart people, yeah. I'm, sure that, I'm sure a lot of them are going to figure it out. But uh, I was reminded of, if you remember about 20 years ago, the Harvard, Harvard Business Review ran a, an article that, uh, entitled Career is Over. Yeah, yeah. About the CIO, yeah. and and that was a that was a, a crisis that that job function went through, and there was real serious questions about the value of the CIO role to the organization, and most and that that job function, that C level job function, did make it through that gauntlet, oh. and 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 came out the other end as as a really robust function. I think we may be entering into another crisis of that nature. Yeah, where well, the other knot hole was Nick Carr's article. You know, does does does, does IT, IT matter? matter? Right, and that created a, a a crisis within the CIO community, and they came out of that very strong. Um, I think that. You know, this time around, it's, it, well, it's very clear that IT is becoming utility. There's no question about it. Now, whether that's going out to the cloud, the public cloud, or it's going to be some form of a hybrid, this hybrid cloud, you know, but, but notion it's not, is. But it's not a utility like electricity is utility, because it's a programmable utility. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's with an API. That, right. That, and that, but that's where the value is. is, is so so the, the successful CIO is the one who is going to take his or her organization and and skill it and gear it toward the ability to program infrastructure as code and serve new uh, application development that's going to be driven by you know mobile and, and and analytics and that is going to be i think the model for the for the successful cio now what role that individual plays in terms of the data steward i think is limited i do think there is a need for a, a, a data steward or a series of data stewards. The big question I have is, should that be an individual centralized role or is it going to be, as you point out, the business should own the data. Why shouldn't the business own the data, you know, czar? multiple data czars. And you might end up with multiple data czars. And there certainly there is value to, to getting the data in order, to normalizing it, to federating it, to knowing where it all is. Uh, you, you know, as, as Jamie from, uh, from Gartner said in our, in our uh, interview just now, uh, that the data stewardship is strategic. It does have value. Um, ultimately, it may not be a centralized function. I think for a lot of companies right now, it should be a centralized function because their data is a mess and they need to get to, to, to track it and, and, and figure out where it all is and, and make it all interoperable. Well, Michael Andrew from, from PNC Financial said today they're 80-20, run the business versus transform the business from a data perspective. And he said very shortly they'll be at 50-50. I don't know how you go from 80-20 to 50-50 in a, <laughs> quickly. No. <laughs> That that a, a company that size very uh, aggressive, so, but I think to the extent that happens, um, I would I would predict that what's going to happen is the individual lines of business who do own the data are going to learn from you know maybe there's a there's an ex officio framework that exists okay these are the standards that we're going to develop and oh yeah here's the give I I do see that reverting into a governance role I just don't. Just the nature of organizations. I mean, we were an organization that was highly decentralized at IDG, and, it, and, and, and innovation occurs close to the customer. And even in a centralized organization, innovation occurs close to the customer. And so it's those that are close to the customer that, that have the authority, that have the power, they have the chops. That's just the way companies work. And I don't see them 
relinquishing the data asset and the data agenda to a centralized you know, individual. I see them happily relinquishing the governance, compliance, and security edicts to a centralized right. individual. So you go figure that stuff out and tell us what to do and we'll comply unless there's more business value and the risk is, 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 is you know, less than the opportunity. And they'll make that decision as their P&L dictates. But I see that, I just don't see the CDO getting out of that governance role anytime soon. I, I think you're right. I mean, ultimately this is, data has to become, the entire organization, the culture has to be data oriented. The organizations that are going to, to succeed will be those that have data infused into their cellular structure, right? And are just accustomed, are just thinking constantly of ways that they can use analytics and data to, to do things differently, to improve the customer experience, to be more efficient. Uh, and, and one person is not going to do that. If there is one person who could do that, it would be the CEO. It is not going to be yeah. someone reporting two levels below I, the CEO. I would agree. Now, th this is not necessarily bad news for the CDO. I think it's just a reality check that says, essentially what you want to do is be an agent of change. Uh, affect that change and then get out of the way, you know, and and if it ends up being a governance task, then so be it. Give it to somebody and then move on to the next change agent opportunity. You know, change agents make a lot of money uh, and uh, sure can. and they can affect organizational leverage in a huge, huge way. So, uh, so as I say, it's not necessarily bad news, but I just don't see that boring but important topic of governance um, going away anytime soon. All right, well, Paul, it's really been a pleasure working with you, as always. As always, Dave. And, uh, and thrilled that you're moving back up here, and uh, we're going to see more of you on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, look forward to working with you more on theCUBE. Uh, Andrew, Sam, nice job. Luke, who wasn't here today. Um, you know, we've got a great, great team, you know, behind the scenes at, uh, at SiliconANGLE. Check out siliconangle.com. Check out wikibon.com for all the research. The siliconangle.tv will have these replays and, uh, and all the conferences that we've been to. What's next? The uh, HP Big Data event is next. Uh, the guys in Palo Alto probably have some stuff going oh, on. Next month? Um, yeah, Art, John Wilson, Kristen Nicole, thanks for all your help at the back end. And, uh, and Brendan for switching to Marlboro, good job. All right, we're a wrap. And uh, oh, Bert Lattimore in the crowd chats. Check out crowdchat.net slash MITIQ. You'll essentially see a transcript of the Cube over the last couple of days. We're a wrap. This is the Cube from MIT. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching.